In the heart of Cape Town lies the Cape Flats, the most feared place by many because of the high levels of crime. But did you know, underneath it lies the Cape Flats aquifer, an underground water resource that can ameliorate the water shortage that we have in Cape Town. It is such a valuable resource because the water doesn't evaporate like in the dams and wetlands, but there are threats to it. The Philippi Horticultural Area, one of our farmlands in Cape Town, is dependent on water from the aquifer. Speaking on behalf of farmers is Nazir Sonde from PHA Food and Farming Campaign. Our area is so productive because we have access to an aquifer, an underground lake, uh, which stores enough water for us as farmers to, to use, uh, even in the, in the heat of summer and even now that we're having a drought. We are almost drought proof. Professor Kevin Winter, an environmental scientist from the University of Cape Town, says there is still so much to learn about the aquifer. Cape Flats aquifer covers a large area um, uh, over uh, anything between Table Mountain and the escarpment on the other side. So it's a big area and in fact if you can look on my computer right now you can see that this area that I'm pointing to here is all part of the Cape Flats area. It's a vast area and its uh, recharge in terms of the water that comes into it is falling over this very large um, uh, area uh, from literally Musenberg, Table Mountain over here, right through to Gordons Bay, Belleville, Durbanville area, right up to the west coast uh, to almost Atlantis. And in most cases the water flows underground through to uh, through places like Kailitsha, Mitchell's Plain, Makassar and so on. There is a concern that chemical fertilizers and pesticides used by commercial farmers in the Philippi horticultural area could be polluting the aquifer. Our biggest input is compost. So while common farmers apply uh, fertilizers, herbicides and insecticides to grow their food, we concentrate on building good, healthy soil. Dr. Kanyereri is a hydrologist and a senior lecturer at the University of Western Cape who has done research on the Cape Flats aquifer. The fact that the farmers are using fertilizers, it could be easily uh, translated that these fertilizers do pollute aquifers. But we need enough scientific evidence. Without the scientific evidence, it's hard to determine the impact of farming on the aquifer but there are other threats. If you talk about risk factors, yes, we are talking about uh, the land-based activity that are happening in this area has potential to pollute the aquifers. So we are talking about farming activities, we are talking about uh, the toilets, we are talking about uh, the waste sites, we are talking about uh, the waste from industrial activities and even medical waste from clinics. All these have potential to contaminate or to pollute the aquifers. One of the huge problems of illegal dumping is that all the waste material that is in the soil, all the chemicals and pollutants that it holds, leaches into the soil and into the aquifer. And this pollutes the aquifer water, water which we as farmers use to irrigate our food crops. The aquifer is a national heritage of the province. It's not owned by anyone, but it is protected by the law. Speaking on behalf of the Department of Environmental Affairs is Dr. Isham Palmer. Yes, the department has for green scorpions, a very large group that goes out to monitor whether or not people and businesses comply with the law. And once they see the illegal dumping or building too close to a river or polluting a river, then they report it to us. And every single report, we go out and minimally do a site visit. It was a bridge operation which was done in conjunction with the city of Cape Town. Basically to look at illegal dumping within the Philippines, the horticultural area. Um, when we came on site, we noticed various activities, one of them being sand mining. Once we've actually got on site and were able to see the, the site conditions as they were, we noticed that they had a lot of uh, diesel tanks, because obviously doing mining on site, they had a lot of 1,000 litre diesel tanks, which they stored on site, uh, just on, simply on the surface, which in an emergency situation, should there be spillage, would simply lead into that diesel and things seeping into the earth, um, and then obviously affecting the, the aquifer. Some say the Cape Flats aquifer can supply up to two-thirds of the mother city with fresh water. Uh, we are struggling 
to understand the true volume of water that is held within this aquifer and also passes through the aquifer on an annual basis. There's a conservative uh, amount that's there that it holds something like 18,000 million litres of water. Um, that's a very small fraction uh, of our water use for our entire uh, city. Our capacity uh, storage is round about uh, 500,000 million litres. So we've, we, we, in order to feed the city, we need that level of water. The city of Cape Town is currently at stage three water restrictions. Water shortages and drought will be an ongoing part of our lives as climate change intensifies. Open water sources like dams have a high rate of evaporation making underground water a valuable resource. The Department of Environmental Affairs is doing its utmost to protect it. It's now up to us to educate ourselves and conserve the aquifer. There is a program which is artificial recharge where the plan is to inject water into the aquifers. So there's a mechanism of deliberately putting water in the aquifer for the future use. That's to make it sustainable, to make it available all the time. What we need to do is to protect the quality of the water in the aquifer. And the uh, aquifer in the Philippi area is a very important one for the Western Cape. As you see, a uh, very large percentage of the vegetables is grown in that area. If we're going to look at how the aquifer is going to be sustainable in the long term, we have to understand the flow and we have to understand the water quality within that aquifer. And to do that, we have to put many more uh, boreholes uh, into the Cape Flats aquifer system and we have to monitor those continuously. So education and science have to come together here and we've got to make that a public display so that we can be much more careful in the way in which we are conveying that information and changing people's attitudes.